Blood Rule, aka Megabits, in today's video, we're going to look at the top 10 cards that are going to be leaving our standard format this April. And I'm really excited to talk about these cards because the cards that are going to be in this list are cards that go in almost every single deck or just very impactful and useful cards that we've seen throughout its time here in our standard format. And I'm also going to be talking about what it could look like when that card leaves for our standard metagame. I'm also going to be talking about if I ever played the card and if I'm going to personally miss it when it leaves. But before we jump into that 10 spot here, don't forget to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. Alrighty, guys. So let's just jump right in to that 10 spot. Alrighty, guys. With our 10th spot here, without absolute zero bias opinion, Mew VMAX has to be way down here in the 10th spot. I will not miss Mew VMAX when it leaves. I will not miss Power Tablet. I will not miss Kramermatic. I will not miss Genesect. I will not miss Meloetta. I will not miss any of these Fusion Strike cards. Mew VMAX has been a complete menace and a complete powerhouse since it arrived in the competitive scene. And I think myself, along with many others, are just kind of tired of playing against Mew and thinking about it constantly when we're making decks and being like, okay, you know, do I need to put Drapion on this deck? Does it have a way to be able to beat Mew? What's the Mew matchup look like? And I just think that everybody's kind of tired of Mew. The Pokemon Company printed two counters to Mew VMAX because it was just so powerful when it came out, being Drapion V in Spiritome and Path to the Peak would also counter Mew because of Genesect being able to not Fusion Strike system when Path in play, but now Mew just plays Path to the Peak in the deck. It's kind of nuts if you really think about it. So I think what the metagame will look like once VMAX leaves really won't impact itself that much. I mean, you won't have to really worry about Drapion anymore because it won't be as useful because Mew VMAX and the Rapid Strike and Single Strike cards will be gone, so there's really no need for it. And Spiritone will be also a little less useful once Mew, Mew VMAX and Genesect and all of them leave. Spiritone will still be useful, just maybe not as impactful. So going into our ninth spot here, we have Clara. And I actually really struggled to figure out what I wanted to put here between Clara and a couple other cards. But the reason I ended up putting Clara here is just because you can choose one or both. Being able to put two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand and two basic energies, it really was a very powerful card in a lot of decks. And I did play with Clara quite a bit. And just the complete versatility that it has being able to fit into a lot of decks. You know, if you're playing Gardevoir, you could just Clara, put two Pokemon and two energies back into your hand or something. Or if you're playing maybe even like Chen Pao, which I did this for a while, where you would Clara put the basic energies back into my hand, and then I would Radiant Greninja or be able to super cool them onto something. And Clara, I feel like, also fits pretty well into decks like Goldengo as well. Will I miss it? I don't really know if I'm going to miss it that much. It wasn't a very impactful card as me as a player. I kind of just played it in some weird goofy decks. I never really played it in a competitive sense. But I think the format will look a little bit different after it leaves because we still have things like Super Rod and things of that nature, which makes it put it back into your deck instead of putting it directly into your hand. So it'll be a little interesting to see what happens with having to put things back into our deck and then digging them back out as opposed to just putting them right back into our hand. Going into our eight spot here, we have the Mysterious Tail Mew. And Mysterious Tail Mew was mostly known for being in the Charizard EX deck and the Gardevoir EX deck. Being able to just once during your turn, put once in your active spot, look at the top six, find an item card, try to find that battle VIP pass or that level ball or that nest ball or even like rare candy was really, really strong in these types of decks where you required very specific items to be able to pull that off. So I think the format will also look very healthy per se once Mew leaves because it will shut off a little bit of that Gardevoir and that Charizard just set up ability to be able to find the exact items you need or find them quickly and still be able to save your supporter spot not by using Arvin. So I'm definitely excited to see what will happen. I don't really know if I'm going to miss it per se. I never really truly played with the card that often. Um, I think I only ever played with it maybe once or twice, and that was when I tried Gardevoir EX for the first time, and same with Charizard. So, sliding into our seventh spot here, we have Raihan. Now, I will say I'm going to miss Raihan. Raihan has won me a handful of games just because once your Pokemon's knocked out, or Pokemon's knocked out in your last turn, then you can attach a basic energy from your Discord pile to one of your Pokemon, and then just 
find whatever card you want. And a lot of the times I was able to find like that counter catcher or a path to be able to really stick it to my opponent or something of that nature. So I did play with Raihan a good bit and I think I will miss it to some extent. But I also think that the ability to just go find whatever card you want can be really powerful and we have a lot of other cards that can do that so i think the format will be just fine once this card leaves because the cards that we have that let you find whatever card you want are on pokemon at this point being arceus v star and pidgeot ex so i think the format will look really different when this card leaves and i'm very excited to see what just one of supporter is going to get thrown into decks as kind of a last ditch effort or just a comeback mechanic supporter so i'm really excited to see what that'll look like sliding into our sixth spot here we have single strike and rapid strike and this isn't just the urshifus this is just kind of the whole package per se same with the mew and i will say i am going to miss it being a person who played single strike lugia for a very extensive period of time i'm going to miss the single strike package and i also played rapid box for a brief moment as well so i am gonna miss the g max rapid flows and things of that nature and i'm gonna miss the intellions they were a really fun mechanic as far as what the format will look like we have some pretty powerful decks leaving being rapid box with the urshifu you have the iron valiant urshifu v max as well a little bit of a rogue deck and you got single strike lugia also kind of falling off a little bit now that it's going to be leaving, the only really Lugia variant you could probably play is the Colorless variant. And even that's going to get a little bit difficult because we have other cards leaving that are really going to hurt Lugia. So I am excited to see what the format will look like. It'll be nice to kind of get out of these big VMAX Pokemon and try to just move out of the big three prize Pokemon again. And going back to like the two prizers or the single prize Pokemon. Because VMAXs are really powerful and strong, like tag teams were, but... Being able to just go three prize cards, three prize cards, back to back. Well, I've been playing Lost Tina. So if I can go, you know, Star Requiem and then Lost Impact and then Sableye pick up the other KO right after, the game can be usually over pretty quickly. So we'll definitely see what has to happen, but I am going to miss the Rapid Strike and Single Strike packages. And number five here is going to be Cross Switcher. And the reason I put Cross Switcher in its own category is because sure it's a fusion strike card and i could have put it along with mew like i did and talked about the other cards but cross witcher got played in a lot of other decks being chen pao backscalibur and goldengo and i think once cross switcher leaves it's going to be very interesting because it's going to be really difficult to pull off a cross switcher canceling cologne play like we see with radiant greninja or even we see in goldengo at times as well so I think Cross Switcher will be a nice card to see leave because I had played when Custom Catcher was a thing where it does something very similar where you had to play two at once. And sometimes when you have one of your prize cards or you only have one in your hand, you got to try to find the other one and you don't really want to discard your hand because you already have one of the pieces. It kind of forces you to play things like Pokestop as well. And well, if you whiff on it, well, then it feels kind of bad. So I'm really excited to see what the format will look like once these cards are gone where you have to play two at once. As far as, you know, will I miss it? Not really. Um, I didn't really play with it a whole lot. I only played it with it a couple times when I've been playing Goldengo on TCG Live. And same with Chen Pao and even Turbo Moon. I didn't really play with the card that often. People played with it and like lost Tina for a while, but I didn't really jump on that train because I didn't like it that much. So we'll excited. I'm excited to see what it'll look like. And I think Chen Pao and other decks of that nature will have to find a different way to try to just maneuver around that Manaphy. Number four here is going to be Escape Rope. And the reason I put Escape Rope here in number four is because, well, it just allows you to put your opponent in a position sometimes where they have to put up something in the active spot they don't really want there. And it allows you to be able to put something up that you would want there, or maybe something that, you know, it's really difficult for your opponent to deal with. You know, Snorlax Stall being able to put up another block Snorlax, or Lost Box being able to just put up another Comfy to pull off another Flower Selecting. There have been a lot of times where my opponent has, you know, a Pokemon V in the active spot, and then they have a single prizer with like 70 HP or 60 HP on the bench. And I'm like, all right, I'm at four in the loss zone, escape rope, Cramorant, take the KO on your single prize guy. And then hopefully try to KO the V on the next turn after that. Will I miss it? I think I will miss it only because I've been playing Lost Box a lot and it is a really good fit in Lost Box. 
as far as what the format will look like i think the format will look just fine there's tons of other switch cards out there there's a good amount of other gust effects out there it's just not as good i would say escape rope being on an item being able to put your opponent sometimes in a sticky situation they don't want to be in and putting yourself in a nice situation where you want to be in is very useful Alrighty, guys, going into our third spot here is going to be Level Ball. And the reason I put Level Ball so high on this list is because being able to search a deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less and reveal it and put it in your hand is going to be really, really powerful. And funny enough, it's going to be one of those things where Garvor is going to take a hit from this. You could even argue that maybe some of the other rogue decks are going to take a hit, like United Wings or anything of that nature that's using small HP Pokemon to try to come into the game to be really impactful and i also think too that level ball was one of those cards that once was very strong and very popular but had kind of fallen off as of recent but it is such a strong card in single prize or low hp pokemon nonetheless i even see people play this card in maridon because you're able to find the flaffy that you need at an instant because it has 90 hp or less Curlia's in Gardevoir, you know, other birds you needed wings, Zoro Box plays it. A lot of weird off meta rogue decks play level ball, and I'll be sad to see it go, to be honest. It was a really fun card to be able to just stick in a Zoro Box deck or United Wings or whatever weird rogue deck I wanted to throw together. And it'll be kind of sad to just not have this such nice card as an option. As far as what the meta will look like, I think the meta will be just fine once it leaves. We have other cards to be able to find Pokemon as an ultra ball or capturing aroma it's just not as consistent so you might have to sacrifice some things throughout the game or you know put it up to luck and flip the capturing aroma or even mesa goza to do so so i'm excited to see what the format will look like but i don't think it'll be like end of world or anything sliding into our second spot here we have path to the peak and i'm gonna start off by saying i'm going to miss this card being a person who has played Lost Tina now for the last two-ish months, I love Path. Being able to play against a Maridon player and just go turn one Path and then watch them just struggle and not be able to tandem unit feels incredibly good. But as far as the format goes, I think the format will be much healthier per se once this card leaves because it'll open up to a lot of other decks to exist. We'll have a lot of other Pokemon that can only really work when they have abilities and if you can't remove that path when you're playing that deck, then, well, you're kind of stuck. And I'm really excited to see what it'll look like because I think it's going to open up the format a lot to a lot of different decks to see what we can come up with because we, now we don't have this stadium that can just completely shut off your entire deck potentially if you can't remove it. I've lost games when playing Chen Pao because my opponent just stuck a path turn one and I couldn't find my Pokestop to remove it and I just lost. So I think it'll be really exciting to see what the format will look like once Path is gone, but I'm going to miss it a lot. I've really enjoyed playing with Path, and I don't know, even when playing Lugia, like, it was still really fun because I'd be like, all right, go get that Pumpkaboo and really show it to my opponent that I have an out as a Lugia player to remove this Path. And I did play with this card a lot. All right, going into our honorable mentions here. We got Melanie, Professor Brunette, and Flaffy. And these are the cards that I thought about maybe putting in different spots where I put Clara. But ultimately, they ended up just being honorable mentions. Melanie, because it's such a very strong and impactful card in decks like Palkia, and in even things like Rapid Box with Inteleon VMAX. And Professor Brunette, strictly just for, you know, Zoro Box decks to try to get those stage ones into the discard pile, and Lugia decks as well. And Professor Brunette was a card that only really saw play in a couple decks but was such a good card that you had to play at least one or two copies in that deck because if you could just go luminion professor burnett discard two archaeops evolve and put your archaeops right onto the bench it felt incredibly good and then melanie being able to just attach an energy draw three cards and then hopefully be able to attack right after really strong as well and then we got flaffy here as kind of just the maridon players will say this is, this is going to be the hardest part for Maradon players to overcome is because you're not going to be able to use that Diner Mode or once during your turn attach a basic Lightning Energy from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. And I think it's going to be one of those things where they might have to resort to playing things like Energy Sticker or try to go to the more turbo version and play a heavy kind of 
electric energies and try to really just rely on your electric generators hitting so will i miss these cards some of them yes others no um melanie not so much i didn't really play with it that often i only played with it a couple times as far as professor net presser brunette goes i'm definitely going to miss the card only because i played lugia for such an extensive period of time and i don't really care about flaffy i don't play maridon i never really played maridon either but i mean i definitely feel for all the maridon players out there definitely going to try to figure this out and i think it'll be entertaining and i think the format will be just fine once these leave too sliding into our number one spot here everybody knew this card was gonna be here battle vip pass i will say i'm going to miss battle vip pass just being able to get almost completely set up off of one card is absolutely incredible and as a lost box player if i'm like flower selecting or i'm using a chorus after turn one this is just free lost zone fodder to get to 10 so i'm definitely gonna miss this card just being able to search your deck for two basic Pokemon, any basic Pokemon, and put them right under your bench is incredibly strong. And we've seen it many times, even on stream, when someone plays two battle VIP passes, they do a little fist bump or they're like, dude, that's wild. Because, like, you're fully set up off of two cards. And if you're going second, you're able to Arvin for this card. You're literally able to find it. You're able to use celebrations mew to find battle vip pass off the top six potentially you know this card is so strong and so powerful that literally almost every deck had to play this card except a handful being like maridon which had tin unit which essentially does the same thing just for electric pokemon and lugia didn't play this card as well just because well there was not really any room for it so a lot of other decks had to play this card because it allowed you to set up so quickly. And I think the format will be in a really, really interesting place once this card leaves because it might put us in a position where we have to add more copies of Nest Ball, more copies of Ultra Ball, and we're going to have to play that Poffin card when it comes out. And I'm really, really excited to see what it'll look like. So let's jump right in to that outro, guys already and that is the top 10 cards that are going to be leaving our standard format this april let me know down in the comments what cards you guys are most excited to see leave and which ones you're well kind of sad to see go if you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a like smash the subscribe button i really would appreciate it Alrighty, guys i'll see you in the next one peace